We all know the scenario. You're walking through the woods, minding your own business, possibly having an existential crisis about the life you're living and the choices you make when BAM! Two roads diverge in a yellow wood. And I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. And so concludes what is perhaps America's most famous poem, Robert Frost's 1915 The Road Not Taken. Written 100 years ago, Frost's poem is traditionally quoted as an ode to individuality, triumphant self-assertion, and the mostly American celebration of free will. However, it turns out that the road not taken might be the road most mistaken, and for the past 100 years, another darker or pessimistic meaning has gone unnoticed. In his 2015 book, The Road Not Taken, Cornell University English professor David Orr argues that the poem isn't simply a salute to choice and can do American individuality. It is much more complex and serves as a cheeky, dark narrative of choice and regret. After all, the poem's title is The Road Not Taken. The Christian Science Monitor of August 17, 2015, argues that the poem's ambiguity serves a unique role culturally, as the ideas it holds intention capture the self-deception many Americans practice when attempting to narrate or justify the roads we did take. Or argues that Americans have a tendency to assume that their current position is a product of their own choice, as opposed to choices made for them or allotted to them by chance. Because the poem has remained so firmly lodged in the public's imagination, but as misinterpretation offers insight into American culture, it's time we first uncover the poem's origin, as that will help us second, better deconstruct the poem's meaning, and finally, apply implications of a poem Duke University professor Franklin Trickia calls a wolf in sheep's clothing. While regarded as one of the greatest poets of his time, Frost didn't always have this reputation. However, one man changed all that. Therefore, it's now time to explore Frost's relationship with this man and how this man came to be Frost's inspiration. First, in 1912, at the age of 40, Frost was penniless and his career was going nowhere. Frustrated and nearly broken, Frost threw a Hail Mary and traveled to England for inspiration. While there, he befriended literary critic Sir Edward Thomas, who would later champion his work. According to the book Robert Frost and the Poetics Appetite, the two men would often take long walks on the countryside, and Thomas would often regret not having taken a more scenic path. Therefore, biographers of both men argue that Thomas's indecisiveness, or what Frost called his crying over what might have been, served as inspiration for the poem. In fact, in 1915, Frost sent the poem, then titled Two Roads, to Thomas, in hopes that he would see it as a joke, a gentle, philosophical poke at their time spent together. But he didn't, as the poem confused Thomas. According to the Observer of August 18th, 2015, Frost sent a letter to Thomas about the poem, stating, You failed to see that I shall be telling this with a sigh was a mock sigh, hypothetical for the fun of the thing. Thomas then replied with this snarky comment, I bet you couldn't get anybody to see the fun of the thing without advising them which kind of laugh they are to experience. Clearly, even one of the most keen literary thinkers of his time gave explicit instruction on how to interpret the poem. And perhaps this was Frost's intention, to be misinterpreted. Therefore, it's now time to better deconstruct the poem. First, the difficulty in understanding begins with the poem's title. The conclusion, seen here, is the poem's most famous stanza and captures what many believe to be the central message of the poem. So much so that the October 4th, 2015 Wall Street Journal notes that an awful lot of people mistake the poem's title to be The Road Less Traveled. But it's not. After Thomas's confusion, Frost changed the title of the poem from Two Roads to The Road Not Taken. Undoubtedly, this was a deliberate choice, one that literary scholar David Orr argues foregrounds the roads never tried, as the poem isn't about the road the speaker did take, but rather the road the speaker didn't take. In his book, The Ordeal of Robert Frost, scholar Mark Richardson further complicates matters by asking, 
which road exactly is the road not taken? Is it the road the traveler did take, or the more traveled road the traveler didn't take, the one everyone else took? Who exactly is not doing the taking? Second, I shall be telling this with a sigh. Remembering his correspondence, Frost said that Thomas overlooked the sigh, which he believed to be essential to the poem's interpretation, calling it a mock sigh. So, the sigh indicates one interpretation. Or does it? After all, one could interpret the sigh as not being one of regret, but rather one of self-assurance. The forementioned 2015 book, The Road Not Taken, notes that both interpretations miss one distinct element. The sigh hasn't happened yet. The book asks us to recall the poem's final stanza. In the moment, the traveler isn't sighing yet, but rather says he will be sighing somewhere in the future, somewhere ages and ages hence. So, will the sigh be one of pride or one of regret, as the narrator must decide to blame or congratulate himself on the road he did take, telling himself that he is a product of his own choice, as opposed to those choices made for him or allotted to him by chance. One of Frost's claims as a poet was to lodge a few poems where they would be hard to get rid of. Undoubtedly, he has done just that, which leads us to two implications, the poem's popularity and our national narrative. First, literary scholar David Orr argues that the poem's popularity is based in the fact that it both is and isn't a poem about individualism, while it both is and isn't a poem about rationalization. It isn't a wolf in sheep's clothing, but rather a wolf that is also a sheep. It is a poem about the necessity of choice that somehow never makes a choice itself. Ultimately, the poem is a layer cake, and the interpretation lies in which layer you choose to eat, the optimistic one or the pessimistic one. Even if you prefer one layer to another, it doesn't make the other less valid as it is important to view both layers holistically so as to truly understand this philosophical puzzle. Second, our national narrative. We like to believe that we are a nation of crossroads, and at the end of an every road lies new beginnings. In fact, our constitution even promises us the pursuit of happiness, inherently assuming that there is a road to be taken to achieve that pursuit. The Christian Science Monitor of August 17, 2015, notes that above all else, Frost's poem captures the philosophical problem of choice in a structured and civilized society. Do we really make our own choices? Or are they already made for us? Predetermined by structural and historical forces far beyond our control. And it's by asking this question that makes us wonder. When presented with two roads diverging in the yellow wood, did the speaker really ever have a choice in the first place? By taking a look at the poem's origin, another darker interpretation, and some implications, we now know why the road not taken has remained so firmly lodged in our culture for the past 100 years. Undoubtedly, throughout our lives, we will find ourselves at two roads diverging in a yellow wood, and it will make all the difference. Or will it?